Welcome to The Authority of Love. My name is Greg Williams, and thank you again for joining us. If you are on WJMM 99.1 FM on the radio here in Central Kentucky at 11 a.m. every weekday, or you can go to the podcast at WJMM.com, click the podcast tab, and then the Love and Lordship links. You'll find today's and the previous two days' uh, messages there. This is day four of our Names of God series, which means we've already covered 12, we do three a day, at least most days, of the awesome monikers that not only reveal his names, but his character rooted in his faithful, loving kindness, or hesed, the name given to God's love, the, the word that describes his love, or agape in the New Testament. Hesed is the Hebrew word, agape the Greek word. Now we've shared before on the authority of love that this is our goal in our heart. No matter how these names may come across to us, He is truth and He is love. And every name reveals that to us, right? So that we can know Him more fully and love Him completely with all our being. Now you can find out more also at loveandlordship.com, loveandlordship.com. That's our website. Many articles Uh, podcast and videos there. Love to hear what you think about them and share them. Uh, Got a fairly unique message with the authority. It's not new because it's all in the scripture, but it approaches things from a little bit different way, and I think it will help you if you'll give it some time. So uh, that's our heart. I pray that you will come along with the ride for us. As I shared, we're going to continue our series with the names of God, and All three of today's names are going to hit home with each of us as they assure or reassure us of just how intimate God is and how much he has done for us and desires that relationship with us. So much so that this very God came in the form of his son, Jesus Christ, to die for us so we could be in that relationship. That is love. That's the epitome of love. What Christ did in the incarnation coming in the flesh to become human, fully God and fully man, in his life and all that he faced, in his extremely, excruciatingly uh, uh, painful death, his crucifixion, and then in his resurrection. All that he did, that's love. The cross is the central and focal point of all of that. And that's what we can see in God's names. Today's names reveal God as our covering and protection in his love. Another name that proclaims his lordship over all. Interesting that every day almost we've had something along those lines. There must be some powerful importance to that fact that he is Lord. And he wants us to know him as such. And especially to know him in our lives as believers. And then our final name has to do with him as healer. As with each day and all the names previously and all those to come, He is our all in all, and we can trust in him no matter what we may face. With all of that said, our first name today is Jehovah Nisi, found in Exodus 17, 15. And while I love every name of God and what it reveals about his character, this name is one of my favorites, as well as a favorite to many others. As I said, it's found in Exodus 17, 15. The name of God here is Jehovah Nisi. The Lord is my banner or the Lord our banner. Interesting how it can be translated both ways. Very personal and very overarching to all of the community. We'll see that even more in Christ, right? The significance is found in the great story of Moses' arms being held up by Aaron and Hur. Whenever Moses' hands were raised, the Israelites prevailed over the Amalekites. And over time, he grew so tired, he couldn't hold them up. So Aaron and Hur stood beside him and held him, held them high until God gave Joshua and the Israelites the complete victory. Upon seeing the victory, Moses builds an altar for sacrifice to honor God. As he makes the sacrifice, he proclaims this incredible name of God, revealing his awesome character as Jehovah Nisi, the God who is my banner, the God our banner for Moses, for Aaron, for her, for Joshua, for all the Israelites. God's banner over the Israelites was their strength and ultimately gave them the victory. That banner is called love in the Song of Solomon or Song of Songs, Chapter 2, verse 4, and is revealed in Christ in many texts in the New Testament, but I believe most powerfully in Romans 8, 37 through 39. 
Nothing can separate us from the love. His banner over me is love, the banner of strength of God found in Christ Jesus. Praise and thanks to the Lord for all that he's done for us in his love, his banner of love over us. The Israelites conquered their enemy under God's banner of strength and love, rooted in his love for them, and we are more than conquerors under his banner of love in Christ. What are you facing today or in your life, specifically or generally, that you need to be reminded that God's love in Christ covers you? His banner over you is love, and he will be your strength in that love and see you through. Our next name of God today reveals such a wonderful and beautiful attribute of God that we all should hold very dearly. It is found in Exodus 8, verse 10, when Moses is speaking with Pharaoh regarding the removal of the plague of frogs. You know, there were 10 plagues, right, in, 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 the, uh, in the plagues on Egypt that, Moses, that God gave through Moses and through Aaron. Pharaoh, however, stubbornly says to Moses to have God remove them tomorrow. I mean, they were nasty. Why, why in the world would he want them to linger overnight? Because they were everywhere, even in their beds, they said. Why would he say, remove them tomorrow? Moses' reply and use of the name of God here is powerful and personal. That you may know that there is no one like El Elohenu. El Elohenu, the Lord our God. The use of this name here should give us great encouragement and comfort because God is revealing through Moses to all of Egypt and Israel and to all of us today that he is our personal God watching over and caring for every part of our lives. Christ is then revealed as our personal God once again in many places in the New Testament, but I believe that John 3.16, the most poignant and probably the most well-known verse in all of Scripture, it's the most poignant and real to me as well and likely to you. It is in John 3.16 that he says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. I think it is because he is our personal Savior and Lord. Look for yourself and find others that comfort you in your personal relationship with God in Christ. And I would add John 1.14, we've already talked about this in previous days, that the Lord, that God became flesh and dwelt among us from the Father, full of grace and truth. And in 1 John 3.16, that tells us again why he came. Christ came to save us. Finally, our third name of God in today's message. And I would imagine that every one of us at some point in our life have prayed to God for ourselves, for others, and or have had others pray for us as he's revealed in this name. We often struggle with our faith to truly know God for who he is, and today's name may challenge our faith as much as any. But I pray that it strengthens your faith to know Jehovah Rapha or Jehovah Rapha, the Lord God who heals you. First found in Exodus 15, 26. God is the only one who can heal our physical, mental, emotional, relational, and spiritual brokenness, sickness, and dis-ease, disease. As we will see in Christ, it's already been done, past, present, and future. Do you believe that he is your healer and has already healed you? I pray believing that every day, even though I have traumatic arthritis in my neck, which causes back and shoulder and pain throughout. But I know he's already healed me. My pain does not change his truth. You see, let's look at it there in, in, in the scripture. In the Exodus passage, God explains to the Israelites as they are coming out of Egypt and heading to the promised land of Canaan that he is the God who heals, Jehovah Rapha. As is predominant under the Old Covenant, the conditions were that if they would keep his laws and do what was right in his eyes, he would reveal to them that he is the God who heals. That's what he's telling them. In Christ and in his blood and body in the New Covenant, the healing work is already finished. Isaiah 53, 5 prophesied this, and Peter talked about it, quoting that Isaiah text in 1 Peter 2, 24. It, they remind us that by Christ's stripes or wounds, and he had many. 
that we are healed. If we know him as Savior and Lord, not only am I forgiven and cleansed of my sin, but I am healed. And the word are here means past, present, and future. It's already done. Even as I struggle with back and neck pain and have been prayed over many times, I stretch and exercise daily to help. I know by faith that I am already healed in Christ, just as I know His blood has already completely forgiven me both now and every time I confess my sins. As a matter of fact, my faith has to grow stronger because while I can't see it or feel it right now, I still trust Him. And I will trust Him to reveal when it will be manifested, either in this life or in my new body with Him, ultimately, either way, for His glory. Praise the Lord and thank Him for that kind of God. They're who He is. Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals. Food for thought as we wrap up this week's Names of God series because tomorrow we're going to have a Family Foundation Friday again with my, my good brother and friend David Walls. Here's the food for thought on these three names. God as Jehovah Nisi is our banner of strength and his banner over me, over us, is love. I can count on that in any and every situation. Our book, The Authority of Love, emphasizes that over and over again. God is El Elohenu, the Lord, my or our God. Very simply, he is Lord, he is our God personal and collectively, letting all believers know that he is a very close and personal God to each and every one of us. And finally, he is Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals you, and we can be assured of that even if we may still suffer in this present body. Walk in faith, knowing that he is faithful. Our action items, again, there are four. You know the first two. Read the scriptures in this message. Ask the Holy Spirit to teach you. He will. Because his word says he will. Number two, write down what each of these names of God in this message means to you. Number three, list the ways that God has shown his love to you and his personal walk with you. How has he healed you? Or are you understanding by faith that you are? Number four, there is little more difficult. I mean, I'm sorry. This is a little more difficult. But with Christ as your Savior, Lord, and healer, begin by walking in that faith that your healing is already done, even if you're still in pain, because He is your healer. I'm asking you to grow in that. Learn that. We'll pick up next week again. Tomorrow's a Family Foundation Friday. Join us. Great stuff on the legislation and policy that affects our marriages, our families, our communities, and our culture. We need to stand for God's truth. That's why we do that. Invite family, friends, and loved ones, even your enemies, to join us. And thank you for doing so. Remember, you can get our book, The Authority of Love, second, spell that out, S-E-C-O-N-D, if you're, if you're searching online, and you'll find it. It's at Amazon. Love to hear what you think about that. Again, we are a nonprofit. You can donate online, loveandlordship.com, the Give tab near the upper right. Then it will take you through it in less than two minutes. Give one time or ongoing. We sure appreciate that. All donations are tax deductible. You can also give through Cash App. Do cash.app forward slash dollar sign love and lordship with both L's capital and all together. And then you can mail it to love and lordship. 324 Timothy Drive. 324 Timothy Drive, Nicholasville, Kentucky, 40356. If we're not the one you give to, keep praying until God shows you who to give to. And please keep praying for us. Thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for your prayers. Thanks always to the Lord. Make it a great day and God bless in Christ. Stay tuned for Bill Reeser Encounter. I'm Greg Williams and you're listening to The Authority of Love.